This is the second video of the FoxBlox ICF portion of our build. For the first video, click here. For more details, costs, lesson learned, etc., check the link in the description. This video starts with my mother and sister making a set of scaffold jacks. They'll be attached to vertical 2x4 rails that will attach to the Fox blocks, and they'll support the working platform and safety rail, and then we can move that up as the wall grows. Those white panels on the side are the Fox bucks. Here they form the side of the rear garage door. It's just instead of like 2x12s. After a few layers, it becomes more difficult to add more Fox blocks and to reach inside and connect all the clips. So we just raise those scaffold jacks up a few feet and keep working. The mudroom wall also needs to be extended up and over across that back door. The video cuts out, but Bonnie actually started from the top and worked her way down to avoid a seam. Then back to the north wall with its raised walkway. The Lego part is pretty easy and fun. The surface bracing is less fun. Uh, here my 9 year old is helping me out. Then we poured the second third of the north wall and the rest of the mudroom wall. Then my kids got to take the bracing apart. My mother and I moved the scaffold jacks up the wall so that we could lay the next section. It felt secure enough, but we added extra bracing this time, partially for psychological reasons. We got the 2x12 board up there, but without much to hold on to on either side, it was pretty scary for a while. That handrail I put up made me feel much better. This little buck is for the rear ventilation fan. Then it was time to mark and cut the curve on that north wall. I started with coordinates from my computer model and then tried to draw a gentle curve through the points. Not the best method. Then I trimmed that out with my jigsaw. The jigsaw cuts only half the blocks, so those black bits are the inside of the other side of the blocks. I started the south wall by laying out some blocks to figure things out. I screwed in some kickboards so the bottom of the wall would stay put. The Quonset hut wasn't quite straight, so I set up my laser and I marked the front of the Quonset hut for trimming. It cut easily with the grinder. I think it was Aaron's idea to cut these tabs for attaching the ICF blocks later. Bonnie and my parents arrived to help with the south side blocks. We laid out a row to mark where the holes for the rebar needed to go, etc. For the second mudroom wall, we also drilled and glued rebar into the concrete rib. Most of the stacking goes pretty easily, but sometimes you work too fast and you need to back up a few steps to get something right. It's easy just to unclip and remove the blocks and then put them back later. The blocks are also easily trimmed with a jigsaw, but you gotta get a longer blade to go all the way through to that HDPE plastic reinforcement. Here again on the south side, the T-blocks cause a misalignment of the higher regular blocks. Foxbox training says to just align the seam and patch it with the board. Running bond isn't really necessary because the concrete in the wall is still going to be continuous even if the blocks have a straight seam. The patch is just the easiest way to sort it out. The wind was picking up on this side and kept trying to blow over the section of wall, so we secured it on the back side. Then it was time to build the columns. They would have hundreds of pounds of concrete trying to bust out of them, so we took this part seriously. The sides are Fox Bucks again, and then we used 3 quarter inch particle board and then strapped it all with 2x4s and lots of screws. Bonnie and I worked together like a well-oiled machine to get these done. Then it was time to set up the columns and to span the garage door openings with the Fox Blocks. That was pretty easy too. Then everything was leveled and secured together. Back with Sherry on another day to trim out the doors. Unfortunately, the camera's outside and we're trimming on the inside, so you can't really see the template we used and the camera cut out before we finished the job. This is January and the sun often sets before I get off work, so I appreciated having my electrical hooked up so I could at least have lights. Here I'm making sure the gap along the edge of the Fox blocks doesn't just leak concrete. It doesn't have to be pretty, but it does have to hold back hundreds of pounds of force. Here you can see the cut arches, but I needed to patch the bottom side too. The first pour would put almost a thousand pounds of wet concrete above each of these openings, so I had to do a good job. Similarly, I can't just leave these curved sides open, but I needed to put sideboards on first in order to transfer and distribute the loads from the edges to the sides of the walls. Back again to the doors and you can see the plan taking shape. Remember, a thousand pounds of wet concrete per arch. I decided to add some support columns also. Poor day came and I still needed to set up the scaffold and finish some rebar work. Ryan helped with cutting the rebar for me and meanwhile the inspector came and checked everything out. We attached the camera to the pump truck hose to get this shot. We started on the south wall but just filled it part way to give it concrete a chance to set. Then we moved over to the mudroom wall and filled that halfway. Then we moved over to the north wall and filled that one to the top. Sometimes the hose clogs and it needs to be blown out and then you can go back to pouring. 
and then back to finish that mudroom wall, and then finally back to finish adding weight across those garage door arches. The guy dumped what was left on the sand. I'll actually use it as a base for my rebar bender. Here's a video tour. You can see the minor bracing that we needed on the back side of this wall, and the particle board end caps. Those numbers along the bottom are coordinates used for trimming the curve. Again, there are no attachment points on the ends of these Fox blocks, so the loads all had to be transferred and distributed through these sideboards and into the furring strips embedded in the front and back of each Fox block. The plastic at the top is used to keep the rain out of my freshly poured concrete. All the blocks and boards are temporary, but probably critical. Going around to the back side, you can see that we left the top of this T-section open. It'll all be buried, so it doesn't matter. I just wanted a bit of a toe to keep the wall stable. Here you can see some scrap blocks screwed through the tabs and into the Fox blocks. This rebar hints at a later step where we'll cover the Quonset hut with rebar and then concrete and then earth. The vast majority of this wood is recycled. These are all part of the rib forms. No leaks or bulges. You can see that the pressure caused the bottom of this 2x4 to split. I'm glad we added these posts. Then it was time to strip these forms, at least enough to secure the garage with 4x8 plywood sheets. I wasn't allowed to take down this high scaffold until Sherry arrived. But now that she was here, we started by putting up some lath. Well, that's easy to do. And then we took it all down. Sherry helped with the cleanup and then took the kids home while I finished up closing the garage. I put in a cheap $5 door I got at the recycling place for easy access. Then I turned my attention back to the next and final level of ICF blocks. This next section has a circular window, so I would need to build that buck. It wouldn't fit on one 4x8 sheet, so I had to attach several pieces together in layers to make a circle. And then I attached treated 2x4s for the actual buck. I built a section of wall so I could trim it on the ground and then assemble it later. Then I finished trimming the Quonset hut. Back out again with Sherry and we set up the scaffold for the south wall. We added some 2x4s to stiffen the 2x12 bridge span. Then we drilled additional holes for rebar, vacuumed out the dust and started stacking. We got the window buck up and in place, but it was clearly too high. Oops. Uh, we decided to take it down 12 inches, but I used the template for the inside hole, not the outside hole, so we had to pop it out again and trim off another inch and a half. It fit. Then it was time to raise the scaffold deck to another level. A new day. The scaffold was the same width as before, but at this height it felt much narrower. I decided to widen it and add a rail. That felt much better, even if I didn't get many blocks up that afternoon. Another afternoon, and we were able to get the remaining layers of fox blocks and rebar up. Then vertical rebar needed to go in next. Then some wood for this final trim. This time I used a 1 inch wide strip of rigid insulation to help me form that smooth curve through my coordinates. This curve trimming part was probably the most annoying part of the whole build. It felt slow and tedious, and I wasn't even 100% sure it was necessary. This was the final evening before poor day, so lots of little tasks to take care of. Poor day. With the truck warming up in the background, here's a quick look inside the ICF blocks at the top of the wall. That black plastic reinforcement holds the rebar in place until the concrete is added to fill this void. Those metal clips hold the fox blocks to each other. Pumping began, but the mix was a bit thick. Was too low slump. So it wasn't going down into the void like it should. So we drilled some holes to be able to access and push the concrete vibrator into there. On this side though, we eventually ended up ripping off the wood for better access. While the truck was clearing itself out, I troweled off the wall. And then the final removal of the scaffolding.
next task is to finish up all those big concrete ribs.